Okay, so welcome back to another Blender tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this really cool Russian doll animation in Blender and we're going to be using some really simple techniques. In fact, the, the texture you see here is just one we're going to project. I'm going to show you where to get all of the resources and things like that and I will be uploading um, my uh, Blend file to my Patreon as well. So if you want to make this, keep on watching. It's a ton of fun. We're not going to get too complicated. It's relatively beginner friendly. And I think the overall result for the amount of work we put in is pretty cool. We will be rendering in cycles, but um, it's even then it's not too bad with the new um, versions of Blender. Okay, so in the description below, I'm gonna have the links to these two resources. The first one is a free image on Pexels. Just go click on the link, come here to free download and download the biggest size. And then on Polyhaven, there's gonna be this plywood texture. That's just so we can add a texture to the inside of the box. Just looks a little bit better, I found, and you don't see the paint in the inside as well. So download these two, I've already done that. And um, here you can see, I've just extracted the zip folder for that, um, the plywood thing here on Polyhaven, the texture. I just went, made sure it was Blender. Um, I went 4K and I clicked on download. And the same goes for the Pexels download. I just put that image on my desktop. That's just where I prefer to put it when I'm working. So with those two resources now gathered, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and open up a fresh scene in Blender. I've already done that and saved it, but anyway, this is just a fresh scene in Blender. I'm just gonna select all of the default objects and I'm gonna press delete. You guys can do the same thing. And then we're gonna go into our front orthographic view. And inside of our front orthographic view, we're gonna press Shift A. We're gonna to go to our mesh options. Let's add in a cylinder, okay? And now let's, while we're still in the front orthographic, let's take that Pexels image, left click on it and hold it in and drag, and just drag it into the scene here. Don't drag it on top of the object, but just drag it right on top of it, nicely in the middle, as much as possible. And there it's added in. And you can now go in your front orthographic view with this image plane selected, go S to scale it up till it is the same width as the cylinder here. And we're gonna go G, to move it and just try and get it roughly in the middle. You don't have to be too precise. Scale it up maybe just a little bit more. So the widest part of it, we want that to be the same width as the cylinder. Now we don't want to scale up the cylinder. That's bad practice. Just match up the image. So now we have this set up. I'm just going to drag this back up. Let's um, tab back into edit mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these verts here. In fact, I'm going to toggle on the X-ray up here so I can grab through the mesh. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go G, Z, move it down just a little bit, and then grab these bottom verts. I'm gonna go S to scale them. And at the moment you'd notice that we're working in orthographic, but the image is perspective, but don't worry about that. Just get it roughly in place. Okay, so we're gonna go about here. Then we're gonna go E to extrude and then Z and extrude it down into Z about this much. Then we're gonna come in here, Control R, and you can see the yellow line, roll the middle mouse button up two times to add in two cuts, left click twice, and then go S, Z, and scale that up into Z, and then go S and just scale that out. So now we have that lip there. We're gonna come in here, Control R, left click, add in a loop, S to scale, do the same thing here. We're just trying to add a little bit of curvature to this. You could use the spin tool for this and just like extrude a single point, but or the, the screw modifier, but this is just another way to do it. So I'm just gonna now select this edge here and I'm just gonna go E to extrude, extrude it up to about here and then E to extrude again, S to scale. I mean, you guys get the idea here. We're just trying to scale up on the Z or extrude up on the Z and just um, scaling it according to the um, reference here, so. Doesn't matter if it's 100%, we'll adjust that when we're projecting it. Um, in areas like this where it's not enough, just go Control R, left click, add in a loop, scale it up. You guys get the idea here. So I'm just gonna go E to extrude. And let's go like that, add in a loop here. I mean, you guys see what I'm doing here. It's not really that hard. Okay, cool. There we go. Um, this looks a little bit rough. So I'm just gonna come in here, control R, add in a loop here, scale it up. Maybe just um, bevel this edge over here a bit. That looks all right, maybe just one in here. Um, I don't wanna to spend too much time on that. So I'm gonna tab back out. And now we have this object. I'm gonna to toggle off the X-ray. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go shade smooth. And I'm also gonna um, now go to the materials. I'm gonna go new. And let's go over to the base color. Let's give this an image texture. 
come to the drop down, we already have this pixels image in our blend file. So let's just go um, pixels, whatever that says. And now we have this image. If we now press Z and go to our material preview, we can see it's on there, but the UVs are all messed up. So let's go to the UV editing, go into the front view by pressing one on the number pad, then press five on the number pads. So we're in perspective view and then press eight to select all of this and then go U and just go project from view. And over here, you're just going to come, you're going to go S to scale, G to move it and just roughly line that up with um, what you've done here. Okay. I'm just grabbing it and trying to scale it. Um, this perspective seems a little bit off. So I'm just going to maybe move it up a little bit in the front and then go U project from view. It can be a little bit tricky just to get it perfectly right at first, but don't worry too much. Um, just do it as best you can. So that looks a bit better. So I'm just going to scale that down maybe a bit G to move it okay, something like that. And then I'm just going to select these top verts. I'm going to enable proportional editing. And over here, you can actually press Z and go material preview and you can see if it matches up. So for me, I'm just going to, you know, drag things out until everything looks kind of where I want it to be more or less. Don't overthink this by any means. Um, something like that. And then over here, I'm just going to go shift alt left click on this edge and then G bring that down to proportional editing, just so it's a little bit more in line with um, what we're doing here. Bring this vertex in here a little bit, bring that in. Okay. You guys get the idea here. I don't want to spend too much time, but over here you can see that's what the doll looks like. We're now going to go back into our layout and what we're going to do while we still have that material preview is we're going to tab into edit mode and disable proportional editing. Control R, left click to add in the loop, double G to slide it up to where that um, loop is here, or the, 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 the area where it all comes together. And you can see here, it's not quite straight. Don't worry too much about that. What we can probably do is just go back into our UV editing and let's just shift Alt left click on this edge here to loop select it and over here, if we now go control plus to grow to selection, we can actually see what the issue is here. Um, let's just, in fact, let's just press A to select everything. And over here, let's just select the metal verts, enable proportional editing. Let's just go G and just drag it down a little bit just to make things match up a little bit more. Just have a bit more of that curvature there in the area where the two pieces come together. Um, don't worry too much about getting this absolutely perfect just more or less in place over here. I'm just going to select this edge, double G just to slide it, get it right on there. Okay. That's roughly in place. I'm going to go back to the layout, tab into edit mode. And now on this area here where the two pieces come together, with that edge selected, I'm just going to go control B to bevel it slightly and then go X and delete the faces. And now in material preview, you can see we have two different parts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and give this a solidify. And if you go in wireframe, you should be able to see the effect of that. So let's just bring it in a little bit just to give it some thickness. Then come to the drop down and obviously in object mode. And let's just give that um, apply that. So now we have this solidify on here. Tab back into edit mode and then just select the random vertex at the top. Go control L to select all of it and then go P and separate that selection. Now you can actually just hide the top object, select the bottom one. And over here, we're just going to go control R, add in a loop, slide it up. And you can do the same thing in here if you need to just slide it up. And then we're going to go back into object mode, bring back the other one, hide the other one and um, add in a loop here as well. But over here, we're going to go control R to add in a loop at the bottom, go to our face select and then shift alt left click on this edge just to select the whole thing as a loop. Then go E to extrude and Z and extrude it down into Z a bit. And there we have it. We're now going to tab back out. Let's give this a subdivision surface modifier, set the render to two, Alt H to bring back the other bit we hid and give that a subdivision surface modifier and set the render to one. So now if we press Z and we go to material preview, we can see this is what we have. So we have these two separate bits. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go file. We're going to go append. And on the desktop where I extracted that plywood file that I downloaded, once again, link in the description, we're going to open it up, click on that blend file and then go in and click on material and then get the plywood. 
then append it. And now if we just hide one of these objects and select the other one, doesn't matter which one, just select it. Then um, select all of the faces in the inside. Then go to your materials, click plus, come to the drop down, select plywood and then go assign. And now we have that plywood in the inside. Alt H. Now select this one, hide that, and then do the same thing with this one in here. Just select all of the inside faces. I'm just selecting some faces going control plus or control minus to change the selection. And then I'm going to go plus, come to the drop down and give it that plywood and assign it. Okay, so I didn't really select the inside ones properly. I'm going to make sure to do that. Okay, cool. So now we have the plywood in the inside. I'm going to go Alt H to unhide the other bit. So we now have our doll pretty much done. Okay, that was the more trickier part. The rest is really easy. We've got our doll here. Let's select this image, the reference, and let's just press X and just delete it out. Let's just select the actual dolls and let's just type in F3 and let's type in set space origin. Let's go origin to geometry. So each one of these has its origin point more in the middle and not where it was from the original cylinder. So let's select these dolls. Let's go G, Z and move them till they're sitting on the floor like so. And with both of these bits selected, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate, S to scale it, just so it's sitting in here about that much. In fact, I'll probably scale it um, down even more than that. And I'm just gonna scale it down till it's about just fitting in here, like that. Then I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate that one, S to scale it down to that one is sitting inside of that. Make sure it's not um, penetrating. You can kind of see there the thickness in the inside, maybe even a bit more. Then Shift D to duplicate that, S to scale it. This one's even a bit smaller. Once again, you can see in here where the previous one is. You can see kind of the thickness of it just sitting in there. So now we have one, two, three, four. And let's make one more. Let's go Shift D to duplicate, S to scale that one down even more. So it's just sitting inside the other one like that. Okay, now we have five of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to our timeline, we're gonna drag it up, and let's make the end value 440 frames, okay? I've already kind of figured this out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to frame one, and on frame one, we're gonna make sure we have everything selected, all of these objects selected. And in frame one, we're gonna go I, and we're gonna give them a location and a rotation keyframe on frame one, okay? That's very important. We're then gonna go up 20 frames, so we're gonna keep doing that. And in frame 20, we're gonna grab this lid up here, we're gonna go G, Z and move that first lid up about here, just high enough so the next thing can go up and not intersect with it. So about here, then go I and insert a location and a rotation. In fact, press A to select everything on frame 20 and then go I, location, rotation. Then move up to frame 40. And in frame 40, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just select this bottom bit that is part of the outer one. We're gonna go H to hide it just so we can select all of these guys here. And then on frame 40, we're gonna go G, Z and move it up till it's just underneath that one. And we're gonna go I and insert a location and a rotation, then go Alt H to unhide the previous one. In fact, press A to select all of it, then go I, insert location and rotation. So they all have it on frame 40. Then let's go to frame 60, not at 20 frames. And in frame 60, we're gonna select and drag and select all of these inward bits. And we're gonna go G, X and move it over to the X about this much. Just so it's next to this one. And then we're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation. Once again, just select everything, go I, location, rotation on frame 60. And then come up to frame 80 and then drag, grab all of these ones here. G, Z, move them down till they're sitting on the floor like that. And then go I, insert location, rotation. In fact, press A once again to select all of it, I, and then location rotation. So now at this point, if you go to frame one and you hit the space bar, just as a test, you can see this is what we have. That one goes down. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to 100. And in frame 100, we're gonna take the next lid and we're gonna repeat that whole process. So we're gonna select the next lid and we're gonna go G, Z, and we're gonna move it a little bit less than the height of that. We're gonna go I and insert a location rotation. Then select this lid and go G, Z, move that down till it is back where it's supposed to be. Select all of it 
and then go I and insert a location and a rotation on frame 100. And now we should have this from frame one all the way to 100. This lid goes up, the next one comes down. And now we go to 120. Let's select this guy over here, press H to hide him. Select all of these inward parts and go G, Z on 120, move it up. I to insert. In fact, let's just go Alt H first. Then select everything and then 120, we're gonna go I. And we're gonna go location, rotation. And then we're gonna to go to 140. And on 140, we're gonna go select these and we're gonna go G. X, move them over to the side, press A to select everything, and then go I and insert a location and a rotation. Then go up to 160, select these guys here, and then go G, Z, move them down till they're sitting on the floor. Then go and press A to select everything and go I, location, rotation. And let's test this. Now from frame one to 160, we should have the first two um, processes done. And now we're gonna repeat at 180 now, we're going to select this lid and we're going to go G, Z and move it up. And then we're going to go I, insert a location and rotation. And then grab this guy, bring that back down till it's sitting over here on the previous one. In fact, let's just select all of it on 180 and go I, location, rotation. Then go up to 200. And on 200, we're just going to hide this one here. Select all these guys again, G, Z, move them up, Alt, H, and then go A to select everything and go I, and then location, rotation on 200. And then move up to 220, select these guys here and then go G, move them over to the side, and then go I, insert, in fact, select everything, and then go I and insert a location and rotation. Then come to 240, and on 240, we're gonna select these guys, G, Z, move them down till they're sitting on the floor. Select everything, I, location, rotation, and then go up to 260. In 260, we're gonna take this lid down again, like so. And then grab this one, and we're gonna take it up on the Z a little bit. Then we're gonna press A to select everything, I, location, rotation, and then move up to 280. And you guys probably already get where we're going with this. We're gonna hide this one, select this, G, Z, move it up, Alt H to hide it, and then A to select everything, I, location rotation, then move up to 300. And then on 300, we're gonna select this, we're gonna go G, move it over to the side, A to select everything, I, location rotation. Then we're gonna go up to 320, select this, move it down, Select everything, I, location, rotation. And then let's go up to uh, 340 and then grab this one and go G, Z, move that back into place. So it's sitting over here and let's press A to select everything. Let's go I and then location, rotation. So now let's go to frame one and let's see what this all looks like. Okay, you can see here Beautiful, it's working really well. Next one, next one, and then it comes down. How cool is that? So if this smallest one here, let's just select both of these pieces and let's just go Control J to join them. Let's tab into edit mode and um, what we're gonna do is let's just hide this piece of geometry here. And I'm just gonna turn off the subdiv here so it doesn't get in the way. I'm just gonna select all of the inside faces that make up the inward part. I'm gonna just delete them, those verts. And I'm gonna um, do the exact same thing, hide this bottom one, and then delete all of the inside faces here. Okay, maybe this one just as well. Just delete the faces. Alt H, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select this edge and this edge and go Control E and bridge the edge loops and then just select some edges here and just go X and dissolve edges. Now that is actually one object. I can actually select these two edges and just go S to scale them in a bit. Okay, so that now looks more like one little piece, which is usually what it looks like in the inside. In fact, I might just round that bottom out a bit. So that one is a little bit different. Now, ideally you project a better texture on there, but you get the idea. So um, there we have it, that is our animation. 
So what we can do now is in um, our front view, let's go to 340 and we're gonna go Shift A. Let's add in the camera and go G, X and move it back and then G, Z to move it up. Let's go to our camera settings and make it 140 on the focal length. And if we go into a camera view, let's just zoom that camera way back till we're just seeing our Russian doll, the first one, like so. In fact, let's just go to frame one. And we want this one roughly in the middle of our camera. And we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. And with this plane, we're gonna go S12 and press Enter. And then we're gonna go S, X, and scale along the X about this much. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode, select this back edge and go E to extrude and Z. Extrude it up on a Z, then select this edge and go Control B and bevel it and just roll in some segments about that much and then tab back out, right click and shade smooth. And now we have a stage and we have a camera. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this camera and we're gonna animate it along as this um, process here is happening with the dolls. Okay, so that's gonna be what we do now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our camera. And we're gonna make sure we're in camera mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select, um, click on this little button here, that's our auto keying. And on frame one with our camera active, we're gonna press I and we're just gonna give it an initial location and rotation. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag through our timeline. Let's go to frame 40 for now. And just on frame 40, we're just gonna select that lid over here. And we're just gonna double tap R just to rotate it a little bit like that, just so it's not completely um, straight like that, okay? And on frame 60, let's just double tap R, rotate it a little bit, just so it has a little bit of dynamic movement to it. Well, it's not really dynamic as we're keyframing it, but just it looks a little bit more dynamic. Okay, and then on about frame 40, with the camera now selected again, let's just select that. On frame 40, we're gonna go double tap R, and we're just gonna look up a little bit more like that of our camera. So now when we go to frame one, and we just play the animation, we can see our camera looks up a little bit. And remember, this is now automatically adding keyframes when we move things. And let's go to frame 80. In frame 80, we're gonna go G with that camera. We're just gonna move it over double tap R to make it look down a little bit. So now it's kind of moving along to the next one. And then at about 120, let's double tap R just to have it look up a little bit. And then go through to 160, let's go G to move it over. Double tap R to have it look down a little bit and move it up maybe just a bit. And then G, middle mouse button, let's start zooming in a little bit here. Okay, and now we have that. Let's go to 200 and let's double tap R. Let's just kind of look up a little bit and you guys get the idea here. We're just gonna move over to the side, rotate down again, zoom in a little bit like so. I insert a location and rotation and then at 280, double tap R, look up a little bit. You guys get the idea here. Very simple. Okay, we're just moving through and zooming in as we go. And now when we're at 320, we're gonna move up to 360. And then 360, we're gonna zoom out a little bit. And we're gonna go G and move over. So we can see a few more of them. And let's go to 400 and it's 400. We're gonna zoom back even more and move even more over to the side till we can kind of see all of them in the shot like that. So now let's go to frame one and let's see what that looks like. Okay, there we go. And there we go. Cool. And you can select these um, lids here and you can kind of animate them a little bit differently. What I did as well, I just went to my animation curves. I'm not gonna really do this now, but under my animation curves, I um, changed this to the dope sheet, or I changed it to the graph editor, and I just added some noise to um, under the generator. I just added some noise to my Z and my Y location for the camera, just to give it a little bit of shakiness, um, but you guys can do that yourself. It's just something I did as a little extra thing. But for the most part, um, because this tutorial is getting along, I think we have most of what we want. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and we're gonna make the render engine cycles. 
And if you have a GPU, feel free to use it. And let's go to the render and let's make the samples 70. Okay, that'll be more than enough. And let's also make sure the noise is enabled, which it is. Let's go to our world settings. And what you can do is you can actually give this a sky texture, which is built into Blender. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm just gonna get a HDRI environment that I have, but you guys can just stick to the sky texture. So I have one um, that I like. It's also from Polyhaven. Um, I'm just gonna grab that. And I'm gonna now press Z and go rendered. And if you actually go Control B and drag over your camera, you can limit the render to your camera, okay? So now you can see here, this is what we have. A few things you wanna do is you can select your background, go to your materials, click new, and just make it a little bit darker, like gray. For my original, which I'll show you guys in a bit, I added in um, a, just kind of like a default texture that you get in Blender um, for the UV grid. And what you can also do is you can select your actual doll. You can go to your shading. And all I did with that material, that we, um, we just added a simple texture to a principled um, earlier on. What we're gonna do is just go drag this one over, shift A, search, and type in color. And I just took a color ramp node and I plugged it in, and my color into the color ramp. And I just plugged that in to the roughness, and I also got a bump node. And I plugged the color into the height. And this is a real cheating way of doing this, but it worked pretty well. Um, I took the normal and plugged it into the normal here. And then, you know, I just toned down that strength quite a bit, you know, to something a bit more tolerable. And that just gave it a little bit of bump and glossiness, which kind of worked. And the wood, I just left it as it is. But yeah, that is how I did that. And under the rendering as well, make sure to enable motion blur, very important. And if you want, add in an empty and just make sure it's here at the front. Then select your camera. And then what you can do is go to your camera settings, enable depth of field and select that empty. And then bring that F stop down a bit. And that's gonna give you a nice soft focus in the background. Okay, um, add a texture to the background, whatever you wanna do, but this is what I did and I really liked the result. So now you can just render this out as an animation. I've covered how to render out the animation so many times in my tutorials. I'm just gonna leave it in this one. Um, I'm sure you guys can figure it out by now how to render these out, it's super simple. But that is how to make this animation. I will be uploading the blend file to my Patreon. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I like to see what you guys are able to make um, but just have a ton of fun uh, making this animation. I will quickly show you my original, like I said, um, just so um, I can stick to my word. Here you guys see, this is my original, and that's what it looks like. I mean, pretty much the same thing. I just um, also added in some area lights, but uh, same deal, um, same materials, just added in a texture to the background, but it really is, for all intents and purposes, the exact same thing. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.